they won Tonys and Oscars and Emmys and Grammys. There's no red carpet 'cause they're home in their jammies. From Melrose Place to Broadway to Janeway and her crew, let Seth and James bring all the stars to you. Anywho, they're entertaining everyone. So who's gonna grouse? Just sit right back and you'll hear some tales on stars in the. <laughs> what happened ten seconds ago, Seth? Tell everyone. Oh, I just realized that my microphone is completely not set. You know, we haven't done the show in two days, so my microphone was not set up properly. Okay, but yeah, you took more than enough time to make sure you put plenty of gum in your mouth right before the show. And I have an extra piece. Seth, did you ever get in trouble, like in in shows and like in choir? Were you in choir? I don't even know if I. Were you? In, yeah, of course you were in the chorus. Chorus. Because we have that record. Special chorus. I was in chorus corral and special chorus. And I didn't get in trouble for chewing gum. I got in trouble just for having a horrible personality. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't chew gum during chorus, like during rehearsal? No, that wasn't my issue. It was more just like gossiping nonstop, conceitedness, um, breaking. Okay, rules, you know what? We don't have enough late. time for all this. We but don't. amazing sight reading. Still got it. I'm sure you I'm sure you did. Thank you. Hey guys, it's stars in the house. I'm James That's Wesley, and this us. is Seth Rudetsky. Well, it's like, okay. Well, there you go. Wait, Anna Pascal is texting me. Hold on. Um, Seth. I started the show. Wait, I started he the started the show. That's right. Uh, here we go. So welcome to Stars in the House, our daily live stream for the Actors Fund. Tonight, by the way, the Actors Fund, as all of you I'm sure know by now, um, is for everyone in the performing arts, any professional in the performing arts, from coast to coast, everywhere in between. Um, help. They help with your insurance, I'm talking to more and more people that are losing their weeks wow. and, and are uncertain about what's going to happen with their insurance, with health insurance, with paying rent, um, food, utilities, the whole thing. Basic needs. They, they're Basic cash. needs. And, and as well as like they have, they have amazing other programs too. Um, they aren't just giving out cash. They, they also have amazing programs. So go to actressfund.org. They hook you up with a social worker for whatever needs you have. So yeah, if right. you need any help, you go to actressfund.org. No matter what you do, it's not just for actors. You, really, people have to know that no matter what you do in the arts, you can get help from the Actress Fund. Right. Actressfund.org. Now, if you can help, if you can help, if you can actually give some help, donate at stars, stars in the, what is it? <laughs> stars in the house. Donate there. You go to starsinthehouse.com. You donate. And then once you get your receipt or text, Fun 2020 to 56512. For you millennials. And then you're going to get a receipt. You're going to forward it, please, to donations at starsinthehouse.com. Don't just take a screenshot. Forward the actual receipt, donations at starsinthehouse.com. Then we're going to send a list of some names and the donations to the various stars here tonight. So Alice is going to do a dramatic reading of it. Aaron's going <laughs> to pretend that he's alive, but he's not. Whatever. And he'll be reading your actual names um, for the donations. Anything else, Jimmy West? Well, okay. A couple of things. One, actually, you know what? I just realized our Polio Project person is not here. Oh, then we can start the show and bring them on later. Well, we'll bring them on later. But wait a minute, because we have a matching donation tonight. I love when yes. we have these. We want to thank Noah Samuels. It was his idea. In the he literally yes. emailed six weeks ago, and he was like, would you ever do an extra normal reunion? I will do matching donation. And I was like, watch this. Alice Ripley. And Alice was like, I'll get it together. She literally threw her Tony award at everybody. And they all <laughs> said yes right away. So we have a matching donation. Yes. From lovely Noah. And it makes a difference too. And in fact, we are up to $476,550 raised for the Actors Fund. So in addition to today, I know that for tomorrow, tomorrow was actually, oh, oh Seth, my God. look what you just. I just shook the camera. There it goes. And watch it be blurry now. I can't. How about the, show the piano just playing is amazing. Thank you for playing the piano. And when I reposition myself. <laughs> Not when it causes piano problems. Solo, well, why is the table like right next to my game? We need to have on a guest there here for an we intervention. Need to have a we need to have a divorce <laughs> mediator. Continue. No, but. Um, but I, tomorrow, we you know we celebrated all last week our 200th show, and we're in fact on Thursday going to celebrate even more um, because there were just so many clips and so many guest stars. Right. But so but last week is our 200th show. Right. Tomorrow we finally were able to announce today. Tomorrow for our, our literal six month anniversary, we March, 16th March 16th to September 16th is the cast and creatives of Crazy Ex Girlfriend, and Rachel Bloom has basically put together. She's producing it. She's got a marathon, Top amazing list um, of 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 sections, and it's, it's going to be terrific. 
And there's going to be a matching donation for tomorrow, too. And in fact, I believe with enough it. people. No, we're not going to say yet. It's a crazy matching donation. I, I believe that we may past the half a million dollar mark tomorrow with enough help from today and our viewers with the matching and tomorrow's matching and those those donors would that be amazing that'd six be month, really amazing six we just month anniversary five hundred thousand. that's right we just passed the thirty thousand mark with people subscribing to stars in the house youtube channel oh that so would be keep great subscribing yeah to please that. keep yes. subscribing because the more subscribers we have the easier it is to get stars like alice ripley who first was like how many subscribers do you have and then we told her she was like <laughs> fine i'll do it so just please subscribe at Tony uh, Award YouTube. winners always tend to do that, Seth. Haunting, I don't know what it is. A lot of haughtiness I got to deal with. Jeez, and then when they're from a, like a Pulitzer Prize winning musical and it's I won know. the Tony Award, you got to watch out. She's really, it's really because she's from Ohio. I went to college <laughs> there. Very haughty out there. Um, okay, by the way, they're all private chatting each other. Cast of Next to Normal, stop private texting and I, focus we, on the two hosts and what we have to say. But we have nothing to say, do we? No. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually text and find out about Pole Hero Project. Okay, well, we we'll bring them on. We'll bring on. everyone on. I don't want to be rude to our cast, but I'm texting about Pole Hero. So this Project. is a reunion of Next to Normal. We're gonna have the Pole Hero Project at some point. And if you don't know what that is, is to get young people to work the polls because so many older people are not doing it because they're scared of getting COVID. You go to pollhero.org. That's gonna be later, plus a medical break. But until then, let me bring on the cast of Next to Normal. Let me do it in order of who I see in front of me. Oh, the scary doctor, the electric shock therapy man. Thanks a lot for doing that to my head. Lewis Hobson. Hey, hey guys. Hi. Wait, are, you actually, are you actually getting electric shock? What's what's happening here? Oh, it's this is COVID cuts. Um, I'm I'm uh, uh, not getting haircuts these days. So. I literally this is my hair. I literally thought it was headphones, and I'm not joking. Mm -hmm. No, crazy. that would be great though. It's great kind of hair, a hair head fun thing. Thank you. Still got it, Lewis. You too. Uh, <laughs> let me welcome the adorable boyfriend with the hyphenated name, Mr. Adam Chandler Berra. Hi, Adam. That was fancy. I wanted to, you know, give you some class. <laughs> really got, you got it in the throat there. Well, it was a combination of French and Yiddish. Yeah, which is appropriate. Thank you. How do you pronounce <laughs> it? It's actually, I think, pronounced Beira. Oh, uh, that's. I don't say that. I don't. It's like a pick your poison, whatever. That's what, usually what I say. Hey, ah. hey, that's ah. Hebrew. Lewis, this hair. It's very I Len Carrio. It's very what? Len Carrio and Sweeney. Yeah. <laughs> yes. For our serious hair looks listeners, really hard. Yes, our serious XM <laughs> listeners, yeah. just know that Lewis plays a doctor. His hair is full out, um, literally Len Carrio. Adam Chanabera yeah. plays the boyfriend. His glasses are adorable. Coming up is, of course, the husband. We call him Jay Robert. No, we don't. We call him Bobby Spencer. Hello. Hi. It's oh, Bobby, it's great to be here. I'm so glad to see everybody. Hey, Adam Lewis, what's with the princess hey. look? It is what? Princess Leia. Princess Leia going on there. Yeah, that's going to be the ongoing joke. Hey, Jay. Oh. Yeah. I love you guys. You're so fun to watch and be with. I really enjoy it. Yeah. And we're thrilled to be here. And we are thankful the whole community is to what you've done these last six months. Oh, uh, Bobby. Thank, thank you. you. Bobby, that's very sweet. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, well, let me bring on your daughter, who oh. is no longer 17, Jen <laughs> Damiano. Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm laughing so hard already. I'm just sitting here laughing alone. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Let me bring on your son. I already complimented him on his lace front wig. The hair is stunning. You can't even see the lace. Aaron Spade. <laughs> hey, Aaron, all right. Hey, all right, okay. You know, you know, I got a nice mirror behind me. Don't worry about it. Looking hot. And um, <laughs> finally, um, the lovely matriarch herself, maybe not the best mother in the world, but she means well. <laughs> yeah, Alice Ripley. <laughs> Okay, come on, you guys. Hey, Alice. <laughs> Hi, Alice. Hi, everybody. Let me warn you all, because this the stream yard, we're on this thing called stream yard, which is amazing, but it also means that if anyone talks at the same time as anybody else, all the sound stops. So I have to constantly hold back my quips. So basically, just nod knowingly when someone else is talking, and then take a deep inhale, and then you're allowed to speak. Until then... Silence. No, okay. So, like, let's start. <laughs> let's start from the beginning. Who was in the very, very beginning, beginning, beginning of Next to Normal, like back in the day, the Feeling Electric days? Yeah. Who was back then? I was. I did the very first reading in two thousand and three of the full show after they'd done the BMI workshop twenty minute uh, set 
so they came out to the Village Theater. Brian Yorkey was the associate artistic director there. And I was doing Sound of Music across the street, uh, playing Rolf. And, <laughs> and he's like, do you want to come over across the street and play the dad? And I'm like, wow. sure, I'm, you know, very young, but uh, we did it and it was fantastic. And there was no, um, there was no uh, Henry at that point. Um, so that was an addition later on. And then I didn't do anything with it for years and then uh, came, came back to it in 2008. Wait, Lewis, you were playing yeah. Ralph, like I'm 17 going on 18? <laughs> yes. Yes, I, I, I was, I was uh, doing that and uh, riding a bike on stage across the street. And then we were at the Newark stage across the street doing Next Normal uh, during the day, or uh, feeling electric at that point. Um, but it was great. It was, it was so fun to sing those, those songs. And I I've actually have a, a rehearsal tape with, with Tom uh, going over like I've been for the first time, like him hearing it for the first time and me singing it for the first time. So it, it was very, very special, and I never knew that it would become this. So, well, it's funny you mentioned feeling electric because I actually have a clip of you singing "Feeling Electric." One, yeah. two, three. What? Yes. Yeah, you know, I, I came into first Back rehearsal. Fingers in, are great. Thank They're you. Perfect. I came in. I, I came in first rehearsal in in uh, in whenever that was, October of two thousand eight, and I didn't know that that song was cut from the show, mm -hmm. and so I'd prepared it, and I was like all ready to to come and do it. And we were doing a read through of the show, and I was like flipping through my script, going. Where's uh, my big song? And, <laughs> and Michael and Michael came up to me after first rehearsal. And he's like, "I'm so sorry. Somebody should have told you that it's cut." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's, I was. I had no ego about it, but I was just happy to be there." So. You, you still seem <laughs> devastated, though. Um, yeah. Hey, Bobby Spencer, I just realized you know there are people listening on Sirius XM because this airs on Sirius XM that maybe don't know the story of Next to Normal. Would you? I know you you were in AP English in high school. Would you maybe give the synopsis of what Next to Normal is about? It is a uh, rock opera that rocked uh, the musical theater world based on bipolar depression. And this was based off of, I believe, Brian York. He's seen a 60 Minutes episode about bipolar depression. And he went to Tom and said, hey, what do you think about writing a show about this? And uh, and they took it from there. Of course, it was feeling electric and then it turned into next to normal. But when I got involved, uh, I was at the second stage a reading workshop they did before they did second stage. Uh, so I was working as the therapist and Brian Darcy James was the husband in that. Right. And uh, um, so, yeah, I got the part of the therapist and, uh, uh, but when it was moving to the arena stage, I was leaving Jersey boys and it just happened that I ran to Brian Darcy James on the street, literally. And he goes, and they're moving. I'm doing Shrek. And they're taking next to normal to the arena stage. You should really call it Michael Greif. And so I called up Tom and Michael immediately. And I set up an audition and I, I really wanted the part of the husband, you know, because I, I love Brian Darcy. He's the man. Um, but as an actor, you really hope for something like that to come your way. When I was watching in the wings, as I was the therapist, I was inside being a husband and a dad wishing. I was like, I wish I could get the opportunity to do this, you know, this role right here, because Cause you know, I had that in me. And so I had the opportunity to do it and I was thrilled. I cried my whole audition. <laughs> I was a mess. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, and then I, uh, left the room and I, I got on the subway and I met my wife at a Greek restaurant and, uh, I got a phone call and it was my manager. And I looked at my wife and I said, I got it. And I did luckily I did. And then we had the great, I'll, I'll let everybody else talk, but we got to talk about DC. We got to talk about the hang time and the, when all the painting, all the wine, all the SNL, all the, we had such a bonding experience. That's why we are. And that's, it's so important with any show. There's always a family with any show you do. But I think because we're a small band of brothers and sisters, it's not like a ginormous 20 person cast. It's this small band. And also the, the behind the scenes was much, such a small band of, of, of family too. Um, and uh, that chemistry that we loaded together and we got to hang in D.C. was so vital to the success of this show. 
And uh, it's some of my favorite memories of hanging with these guys and just being stupid and laughing, you know? <laughs> Adam, how did, when did you join the show? I got on board at the, um, the reading that we did right before the second stage production. Um, Bobby, you were, Alice, you were there. Um, yeah. It Bobby, was before, it was at second stage or it was somewhere else? It was at some now now dead rehearsal studio. Yeah, yeah. There used to be a rehearsal studio across from across from Second City on Forty Third Street. Uh, right. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. Oh. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Adam, tell everybody who you played in it and how it sort of fit into the plot. <laughs> My character's name uh, was is Henry, um, and he is someone who is sort of um, has been obsessed with Natalie, the daughter of the family, um, at school, and um, he uh, kind of pursues her and then sort of gets um, to meet the rest of the family. So he's kind of a little bit of, of the, the eyes, the sort of outside eyes on the family. Um, I want to just say before we go on, people are asking about doing, I already got my first batch of donations, which is wow. very early. And Lauren just asked, you know, for the actors one, are non-US people able to donate? Boy, the answer is yes. Isabel from Germany is always donating to the show. So <laughs> it starts now, it's .com. And Alice Ripley, because I happen to have this right here, I'm going to send you the first batch of donations. Can you please read. Um, you want a dramatic reading, is that correct? <laughs> I, I don't know if it's Diana in a quote unquote good mood or Diana in a not good mood. You you choose which one she's in. Because I know she's Well, do you want out. me or do you want Diana? It's there. I guess the audience wants Di Diana, so get those sandwiches out. <laughs> I didn't get any notice for props, Seth. You always do this to me. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Well, you can't see me. You, We'd know the drill. Okay, wow, you gave me a lot. All right, so you're going to see my frozen image as I say it to you. Yes. Jillian from New York gave $25. And she says, Seth and James, thank you for being a blessing and light for all of the theater community during this crazy time. You are truly an inspiration. Can you hear the cats using the cat box in the background? Sorry, guys. Love you guys. Brava. And want me to keep going? Because okay, I know it's torture. Jackie, and that's spelled J-A-K-I, which is quite, I think it's delightful. From California, gave $25 and she says, I'm so happy to see this cast together again. Thank you, exclamation point, all capital letters. Okay, the next one, I'll try to get these fast. Jennifer from New Jersey, she gave $51. Oh, that's great. All of this is great. And we why, lost out. Why the dramatic pause? <laughs> <laughs> Very dramatic pause. <laughs> this is dead Well. Alex never looked better. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful That's smile. That's the good news. <laughs> hold on, let me just see. And I put up here, of course, since here, by the way. Yeah. So hold on, Alex. I'm taking you off screen for a minute. Oh, well, yeah. that was hilarious. Um, we'll continue part two in a minute. We'll continue part two in a minute. Uh, so hold on. So we were. So Jen, you are the daughter of Alice Shipley and Bobby Spencer. Describe yeah. your character and how you fit into the plot and how you got involved. <clears throat> um, how I got involved, I, I just auditioned. Um, I was in the, the second stage production. That was my first, um, that was my first go. Um, and I played Natalie Goodman, um, who has spent a lot of her life kind of in the shadows, dealing with her mother's illness. Um, she meets Henry, who kind of tries to bring her out of her shell and show her you know, um, a better, better part of life. And um, I think towards the end of the show, um, yeah, I think things end up pretty good for her, but it's, it's difficult for a while. <laughs> uh, it's difficult for the entire show, dear. It's over the last five minutes. Um, Alice. Alice, you came back. It was such a dramatic exit. What happened? No one knows. <laughs> You were in the middle of, of doing a dramatic line reading and suddenly your frozen face, just there was silence. Well, you know, I can't, uh, I, I can't read text and do this at the same time. It's too complicated for me, so. I will just finish up because I have them in front of me. There you go. Cheryl, I wish I could, Larry, but yeah. Cheryl and I are from Ohio, your hometown. A hundred bucks, sending gratitude, love, and virtual hugs to Seth and James, who've been guiding us through this endless quarantine 
and connecting us to the Broadway that's been missing in our lives. Mm. And finally, Lyra from Nebraska, 10 bucks. Thanks for getting together all. Loving this tonight. Yes, next to normal. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, by Thank the way, we were, we were talking about Henry Adams' character chasing um, chasing Jen, and he sure does. So let's just take a, a little <laughs> glimpse of what it was like when he was Hello. just hunting her down. Deal with it, dear. Deal with it. <laughs> say, say, will you come to this dance? It's some spring formal dance. It's March 1st, and it's cheese, but it's fun and it's free. I don't do dances. Do this dance with me. Goodbye, Henry. All right. <laughs> ah. oh, that That's makes good. me so sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh my Babies. god, oh. so little. So tiny. Yes, Bobby. All the paper. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. That was maybe one of my favorite moments of the show was that mm -hmm. hey number one with Adam. It was just like the best. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Jennifer, how do you do that? Like you, anybody else would think you were just like lip syncing to a track. You, how did you do that? You were, you had so much going on and you didn't even like, you just, it was really, you make it look so easy. Dang it. Wasn't that beautiful? Because the sound just got more beautiful as you continued the line and you had to do all this stuff. And oh, you're just, you're so talented. That's all. You're the best. I love you. Um, Alice Shipley, since you are the best, how did you get involved and give us a little bit more of the plot? Uh, the plot of the show? Yes, ma'am. Well, I got involved because um, Tom Kitt, he was asking me to, to work on the show with him for a while. But it was one of those times I was really busy. And at the time, I didn't know Tom. So I tend to put my friends at the top of the list. Of, I, don't know. I, had, I had a lot of things I was doing. So thankfully, he kept coming back for me. <laughs> you know, but, I, but Seth and James, this was back when we had answering machines. <laughs> <laughs> and and we used to we used to call we we had a name for him I, his name was like Ned or something and you'd press the number you press play and the voice would go you have nine messages <laughs> beep and then it would be Tom Kid going Alice it's Tom Kid and he'd ask me again in his nice Tom Kid way will you help me with this and uh, maybe it was my subconscious going are you ready. <laughs> 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 yeah, because uh, it's like jumping off a high cliff, although I've never done that, because who would do that? But I didn't know what I was getting into, so I'm going to do And tell us a little bit more about the plot. Well, I see, you know, I, uh, Diana's not crazy. Diana doesn't think she's crazy, of course. Right. Uh, to, there's all the different kinds of crazy. I think in Diana's world, the crazy is exacerbated by the people that are trying to fix her right and 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 control out of love you know out of like what they think is good but at the end when diana finally leaves it's because if i don't leave i'll die and right before i leave um i fall in love with my daughter again and i realize you know i love everybody in the family but really the show is really about diana <laughs> And Natalie, and when they put that song "Maybe" in there, because it used to be a song called "Beautiful," and before that, it was like ten other songs. Um, uh, when they put that song, and when when Tom and and Brian put that song, and I think they put it in when we were at the at uh, the arena, if I'm not mistaken. And mm. it just, it, I remember going, "Oh, okay, now I know what the show's about. <laughs> now I know it's happening. It's all about. I just, I really just want to, I want to know my daughter, and I want to sacrifice for her." But she won't let me. She she won't even tell me when she needs me. And the funny thing is, um, people still sometimes think I'm Diana, but I'm less like Diana than any character I've I've ever played. I'm a Norma Desmond. Okay, that's who I really am. But <laughs> in the cast in the cast of Next to Normal, I'm Natalie. I'm not Diana. I'm not the one everybody's trying to hold up and the one who tries to kill herself and all that stuff and has all kinds of loss. Hope this isn't a spoiler. I'm Natalie. I'm the one trying to keep everything together, but hiding you know, as a kid. And so, so anyway, so, you know, how you say, I'm a Gabe, I'm an, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Dr. Madden, I'm a Dan. Yeah. 
But when Dan finally at the end says, you said about the plot, when Dan finally says um, his son's name, that's when the show really starts to get interesting to me. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, because it's like, where's the sequel? And you realize, oh my gosh, he's holding up this whole house of cards. I love Dan so much. Dan's the bank. It's like Dan should be wearing a striped shirt. Now, I could talk about all the different Dans all day long because I love them all. <laughs> oh, speaking all with awesome. Michael, Michael Berry emailed me some questions for you guys. Well, I want to say something. Hey, thank you for Michael saying Michael Berry. Thank you for saying Michael Berry. This is important, please. My farewell speech mm -hmm. when I left that show, <laughs> I was so important, I wanted to thank Michael Berry. And I forgot that night, and I have regretted it every darn day ever since for the last 10 years. Michael Berry and Tim and Megan and Jessica, Michael Berry filled in for me for a month and he was amazing. And mm -hmm. I can't thank him enough. I had a, a, a big old you know injury on my throat and I had to stop. And I never got to thank him. So Michael Berry, I love you. Thank you. Yes. We love you, Michael. Stay yeah. You and Jessica. Yeah. And Megan. Yeah. And Tim. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. Aaron. Aaron, before we, we're going to go to Paul Hero Project and Dr. Lip for a little break pretty soon. But Aaron, before um, before we do, we have to hear from you and how, how you got the gig and tell everyone about your character. Um, I joined also at the reading right before second stage uh, and then kind of went all the way through. But I had actually auditioned for it the prior spring when it was still feeling electric. And I auditioned for Gabe and Henry and got neither. <laughs> And then <laughs> back in when Michael Greif was then involved and, you know, Michael and the guys took a big chance on me. Um, I actually couldn't even go to the final callback because I was doing the show at North Shore. Uh, so they took a real big chance on me and I'm forever grateful for that. And, uh, and yeah, I play Gabe. Um, I'm the kind of 18-year-old uh, manifestation of a child that Diana and Dan lost. And um, in Diana's illness, she kind of envisions Gabe growing up to be this image of her son and you know michael and i talked a lot and kind of really kind of crafted what i did and in my own head and in my own version i was kind of the manifestation of everyone's problems in the show depending on where the show was at and what they were going through and i think that's what uh was so interesting and they even did something with my t-shirts that i the color of my t-shirt would match the character that i was influencing at that time and so it was a it was a really, really cool thing. And then, you know, I think as Alice was saying at the end of the show and her and Natalie finally kind of reconcile and come together to go forward, you know, Diane is able to release Gabe and then, you know, Dan is kind of left to finally have to recognize his problems with, uh, you know, the, the issues that he's dealing with. And so it was a very fascinating thing. And I got to kind of like really mess with everyone in and out. And uh, it, was a, it was a fascinating part to play while Stretching up and down three flights of <laughs> yeah. If, if people don't know, D Diana and her husband lost a baby, and Aaron, you think that Aaron Tveit is actually their son that's 18 years old, but he's actually the manifestation of the son if he had lived. Yeah. And kind of, you know, that kind of not Jewish way, no one discusses the loss. It's, it's like, you know, because Jewish people are always we weeping and wailing, but in that family, it's like, let's never discuss the baby again. So Diana manifests him to kind of have some connection. And, yeah, and the whole thing about the scene, it was like genius the way it was staged because the first 15 or 20 minutes or so, if you didn't know, you would never know that I wasn't there. But then right. if you know, looking back, you could clearly see that we weren't actually interacting. And it's never like a sixth sense thing, yeah. Yeah, like, it is very sixth sense. So before yeah. we take this quick break, Aaron Tveit, first of all, just describe your surroundings for a minute because someone was like, why is this house decorated in such a bland yes, fashion? I'm, uh, I'm actually, I'm in Vancouver right now. I'm, uh, I just landed yesterday. I'm in a hotel room. I'm quarantining for two weeks. Uh, I'm about to work on a, a new little TV thing until Broadway comes back. I can't say what just yet, but I'm here quarantining. And yeah, you know, Bobby's, Bobby's in... Uh, Oregon, and we've been kind of chatting about the fire situation. It smells like smoke here too. When you go outside, oh, yeah. really insane. Um, yeah, so I'm in, I'm in Vancouver in a hotel, and that's why that's not my mirror. Uh, but this this place does have a, if you can see, it has a purple chair. So I wanted to make sure that I set oh. <laughs> <laughs> a purple chair, which is the show, our our, our uh, show color. So here's my purple chair on my mirror. Yeah. <laughs> so can you read the donations I just sent you, Aaron? And then we're gonna take a break. Yep. So we have some donations. Uh, Rachel from New York, thank you so much for your $25 donation. Roseanne from New York for your $10 donation. 
Uh, that's my email going off. Melissa <laughs> from Plains gave a $50 donation. She says, please keep doing this, Seth and James. This is the best thing to come out of the pandemic. It's so much better than more established talk shows. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't agree more. Thank you guys for holding this up. Uh, Christy from Hempstead, $10. Kathy from Pittsburgh, $20 donation. She says, I appreciate all that you do. Uh, Moulin Rouge fan, fan, fans from New York, $77. Thank you all. A uh, huge thanks to everyone in Next to Normal. Luckily, luckily enough to see their reunion show at Second Stage last year. And Nicole from Deer Park, $30 donation. She says, thank you for over 11 years of love and light. A dollar for every time I've seen the show, 30 times. Wow, amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Incredible. Okay, so all next to normal cast, uh, it's time for you guys to take a pee break, and we're going to have uh, our poll hero. Well, we're going to have Dr. Lapook, and then we'll have poll hero, hero project, and then we'll bring y'all back. So we'll see. Take a little break. We'll see you in a little bit. Soon. Bye. Okay. Everyone. See you guys. Bye bye. See you very soon. Don't go nowhere. Don't go right. nowhere. Liz, Bobby Spencer. All right. Let us bring on our chief medical correspondent from CBS and stars in the house, the lovely Dr. John Lapook. Hi guys. Hi, Dr. LaPook. Hi, Dr. LaPook. Well, um, my family, we have seen Next to Normal multiple times. It is one of our favorite uh, mm. musicals and um, and strikes uh, really resonates. And, and I thought it was actually appropriate. We had talked about talking about other medical things aside from COVID mm -hmm. uh, now. Um, although there's lots to talk about COVID, we we were our piece finally aired tonight on the CBS Evening News with Nora oh. Dunn about Bowdoin College and their experiment going back there and they're testing kids every 48 hours and they've got the social distancing and the increased ventilation and it's been successful so far. They found actually several kids who tested positive. They caught them. They found four of their contacts in the first week alone, isolated them, and nobody else so far has gotten infected. So. Wow. It is a model, maybe, and a, and a hopeful one. A good, a, a feel, a feel good story. It's right now. They've got a long journey to go, but I wanted to say about next to normal and bipolar illness. I did a piece ten years ago um, it, with the National Alliance of Mental Illness, and uh, at the time, uh, Glenn Close had. Remember, she came. She came out publicly. Her sister had, bi yes. had bipolar illness. They did a wonderful commercial, and I think right now. Um, is such an important time to pay attention to mental illness uh, and depression and anxiety, uh, all the different spectrum of problems right now, because it's six months into this pandemic, and I think there's added pressure. I'm so interested to hear from Alice Ripley and some of the others, maybe bring them up back for a second, whether what has been their social outreach, because this is an opportunity, obviously it was a play about a woman who had bipolar disorder, um, has she done, have groups re reached out to her and to them? Have they spoken publicly? Um, because th this type of, of, a, of art is, I think, really important to take away the stigma of mental illness, which is the, the problem is the stigma of mental illness. Right. And of course, you, you know, in a, you're applying for a job, you know, you're not going to say, say that because they're not going to hire you. And yeah. They're not allowed to ask. Uh, we, it's we, easy we, to say that you had cancer or, you know, I don't know, heart disease or diabetes even, but to say you have mental illness is a whole other story. Which is a huge problem because unless you get rid of the stigma, stigma people are not going to be able to get the kind of help that they need. So right. I, can, and, I can feel more strongly about it. And, and there's a lot of depression now because of COVID-19, of course. It's really bringing out um, whatever could be stirring is getting actually a lot worse because of what's happening I, right now. I'm seeing that in my practice. I saw it today, this morning, I saw some patients in my office and I saw that with one person. And what's happening, I think physiologically, is at the very beginning of the epidemic, um, there's fight flight. Our adrenaline right. fires, our, our cortisol fires, it's, it's from a million years ago when there was a saber tooth tiger in front of us and we had to quickly get out of there that type of reaction is not meant to last for months. Right. It's very quick. And so when that passes, and now it's six months later, and we're fed up with all this, and the virus is not, you've heard me say, we're fed up with the virus, the virus is not fed up with us. But right now is where I really worry, because I think we're going to be going indoors, it's going to be getting colder. You see a knucklehead behavior. Did you see the college where they some kids had a COVID house? Kids tested, they were they had, they were positive for COVID and they had a party. Are you kidding me? 
And an officer came by and they were sort of pretending, I think, you know, to be respectful. And they were saying, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. And then he goes to his his car and he runs the ID of the student. And he says, you have, you have I haven't seen this before. You have COVID. And he goes, who else has COVID? He says, well, a bunch of people inside. Meanwhile, like 10 people had already left the house. And anyway, I, I just think you've heard me again. I feel like a broken record with this, but it's it's not just you. You know, hashtag don't kill grandma. Gail King quoted me this morning on CBS this morning. Yeah. And Dr. LaBook says, hashtag don't kill grandma. Yeah. And I feel that. You may be fine as an 18-year-old, but maybe not. You can get pretty sick too. But even if statistically most of the bad illness, you know, the really severe illness is in the older people, do you, you really want to bring it back to your loved ones? So, I mean, please. I know it's hard. We've got some months left. The vaccines are coming. Hang in there. All right. All right. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. LaPook. Next time we talk about melanoma detection. Okay. Cheer me up. Okay, thank you. (laughs) Bye. You know, and just for the people that are watching tonight that haven't watched before, the most important thing is what we keep saying, you have to always wear a mask. I just got a letter from someone saying, we're taking a temperature check before each class. Like, it doesn't mean anything. You can have no temperature, no symptoms, and completely be infected and spreading it. So you just always have to wear a mask because you literally do not know if you have it. So cut on the temperature checks. And the, if you feel sick, don't show up. Just wear a mask. And then you won't be spreading it. Love, Seth. Okay, let us do our poll hero. All and right. We'll go back uh, to this bring on Margo. Um, from poll hero, please welcome Margo. I want to say Mattis? Mattis. Yep. Hi, Margo. How you doing? Hi. Thank you for having me. Of course. We're glad you could join us. Tell everyone, because I I know that we have some new viewers tonight. Mm -hmm. Tell everyone what Pole Hero Project is. Yeah. So we were actually um, a grassroots organization started by uh, college students, and we are recruiting other high school and college students to be paid poll workers for the 2020 election. So high school may surprise some people that are watching because... Mm -hmm explain how you can be a high school student, maybe not even be 18 years old and allowed to vote, but work a poll. Right. So it varies by county, but in some counties you can be as young as 16. Um, It really just depends. But the nice thing is if you sign up with us, we can go and find your specific county and see, oh, great, you're old enough or you're not. Um, But in some areas you can be young enough where you can't even vote, but you can still be a poll worker. So what are your, because I'm always excited to hear what the new numbers are. So do you have new numbers? It's been several days since we've had someone on the show. Mm-hmm. I think we're about, we're about to hit 20,000 signups. So we're oh hoping, God. we're hope 20,000. So we're hoping in the next day or two, we'll be putting that out there. If somebody's asking how old you have to be, you have to go to pollhero.org and they could different from county to county. So go there first, but mm-hmm. You can be young, but by the way, be in your 20s and 30s. And that's right. It's really good money, and there's such a major lack of poll workers. And that means people are not going to vote, and that means we're not going to have a fair democracy. Because, Margo, you can be – I mean, I know that Poll Hero is for is aimed towards students, but if there's someone who's 30 or 35 or I don't know, whatever, they can still okay. go to you, right, as long as they're Absolutely. healthy. Absolutely. We will never turn anybody down. So okay. if you're 30, late 20s, 40s, and you still want to sign up, like – you're going to get a text message from a high school college student, but we'll help you throughout the entire process. And That's spread great. the word, everybody. Everybody spread the word. Pollhero.org. You may not be able to do the polls, but you've got to know somebody young who can actually do it. Um, thank you, Margo. Thank you for being here. And thank you for doing Poll Hero. It's so amazing. <laughs> thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Thank you, Margo. Okay, so we've covered our civic duty, our medical duty, our civic duty. Now let's get back to our Broadway duty. That's right. Jennifer Damiano, I texted you, so check your um, – yes. Check your phone, Jen. So let me bring back the lovely Alice. And there's Jen. <laughs> and here's Jen's brother and Jen's boyfriend and Jen's mother's doctor and Jen's dad. Dad. It's all <laughs> Jen's life. Exactly. <laughs> Let's do those donations, lady. Um, Jason from Connecticut, $24. David from South Jersey with love, $51. Charlotte Wu, $154. Wow. Allison from Comac, $25. Catherine from California, $25. Marinez, Marinez, I hope I'm saying that right, from California. She said, this is my third time donating. I love you, Seth and James, and all that you do. But I love, love, love Aaron Tveit and would cast him in everything if I could. 
Uh, and lastly, Amanda from Washington, $25. Thank you for this incredible union for raising awareness for the mental health community, breaking the stigma one musical number at a time. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of musical numbers, Jay, um, Bobby Spencer. Well, first of all, just tell everybody why you relocated for a second before we get into anything. Why, why we moved to Oregon? No, well, didn't you relocate from where you are in Oregon? Oh, you mean that? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're around these Oregon fires going on. We live in an area called Milwaukee, Oregon, which is, you know, right around Oregon City and 20 minutes outside of Portland. And it just, on Monday, it was starting. And on, this, and on Monday, I had a Mini Cooper, and I had to upgrade this thing. <laughs> Last several months I've been needing to upgrade. And on Monday, I'm driving, looking at the sky, going, what am I driving into? And I get the minivan, I trade the Cooper in for this awesome minivan with a roof rack, and I'm hauling back home. And the debris and the flames and the uh, not flames, but you know, the sky is brown and red. It's awful. And then it increases on Tuesday on Tuesday and Wednesday. By Thursday, it's like a chimney. And with my new roof rack and minivan, we take the two dogs and the kids and Jenny Lynn and we haul to a friend's house and we got out and oh gosh it just sucks it smells like smoke and chimney everywhere and i feel queasy in my stomach all the time so it, it lewis you're probably experiencing the same thing it's, yeah, yeah it's like it's like fog everywhere uh, yeah. here, but it's the 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 air quality is just terrible yeah lewis, where are you seattle seattle <clears throat> All right, well, yeah. Bobby, we're going to take a music break. Can you give us the background on why you chose this song to perform for us and get some more donations? Are you talking to me? It's yes. my turn? Yes, turn uh, yes. I love how everyone is knowingly laughing, Bobby. That says a lot. Okay. Yeah. It also you know, by the says a lot when we know how close the casts are. Everyone, mm -hmm. our little secret is when the private chat lights up and all the cast members are, like, writing back and forth, Seth and I automatically know, oh, this is a really close cast. And sure enough, Next to Normal is that kind of cast. Yeah. I didn't know I'd be on screen doing this with everybody watching me. My hands are sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've seen you perform before, dear. <laughs> I, um, I chose this Beatles song because when I, when I first auditioned for the Next to Normal second stage, I actually did... Um, uh, Elton John, Someone Saved My Life Tonight. And the reason I did is because when I first met Tom Kidd, it was at a wine bar on the east side. I was doing a show called Heartland with Jen Colella, and she goes, come on, we're all going out tonight. Here, my friend Tom play piano. Hmm. And so he knew that Elton John tune, so I sang it with him. And then years later, I'm auditioning for him for this show, and I sang that song. But when I went in for Dan, I sang Golden Slumbers by the Beatles. So I thought I'd sing that tonight. Nobody watched me. Everybody turn turn off their thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Once there was a way to get back home. Once there was a way to get back home. Sleep, pretty darling, tonight. And I will sing a lullaby. Don't let smile steal your eyes. Smiles will wake you when you rise. Sleep with it, darling, tonight. I will sing a lullaby. And I will sing a lullaby. My, my. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Still got the high A's. Still got the highs. All right. And I'm 51. Pretty impressive, I think. Wow. With the <laughs> Hold on. By the way, Bobby, I literally always think of you as a bass because the Jersey Boys. It's so funny that your voice no. is so high. I, can do, I, I was able to do Nick Massey and, uh, and uh, Judas. Yeah. Really, A really fun fact about Bobby is that every night before the show, he, uh, our dressing room is above the same wall. 
and he would start warming up, you know, like 7.05 or something. He's pulling his tongue and doing all this stuff. And then he would basically sing the, an entire Joan Mitchell album in his falsetto to warm up. And I would <laughs> scream at him to stop singing it. Aaron, I wrote that down to talk about. Thank you for saying that. He would really come to my door and go, Bobby, please stop singing Woodstock by Joni Mitchell, please. <laughs> But if I didn't say, I came upon a child of God walking on the road, then I knew I couldn't do Dan. If I couldn't do that, I couldn't do Dan. Oh, and I would just be at my dressing table like this. <laughs> Aaron, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Listen, I'm it's sorry. okay. You never worked. You were so good. You're amazing. I love you. The ball. Oh, you. And the sound of that water yep. bottle. Oh, yep. <laughs> yeah, he'd be on stage. And, you know, I was backstage drinking with Bobby. You're just pumpkin. Surprise, Tom. It's the man. Ah, Tom has these amazing library books and CD collections behind him. I love it. Look, there we are. Hey, there we are. There you are. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Um, we can't Kent, give you the entrance because we can't make any noise, but we would all be clapping for you, Tom. Yeah, we can't talk over you. But Tom Kitt is the composer of Next to Normal. And two minutes ago, James was like, we got to ask Tom to appear. And I said, oh, we're supposed to keep the show smaller because it's annoying on the radio to have a lot of voices. And James was like, and cut. So anyway, we wrote to Tom, <laughs> and five seconds later, he responded. Hi, Tom. Hi, guys. How are you? So tell us about it. We just stare at our computer screen. So when someone reaches out to us, we see it. <laughs> I don't know who has the better hairstyle and by better crazier, you or Lewis. What's happening, Tom? Yeah, There's a lot yeah, of. This, yeah. <laughs> Tom, that, your hair looks really nice, Tom. Yeah. He's actually gotten a couple of haircuts, though, during this. So, I mean, it would be much worse if that hadn't happened. Tom, er earlier, Alice was basically telling us that you had to stalk her for her to finally say yes. How many times did you actually call and leave a message on her answering machine? <laughs> I don't remember this, but I spoke to her when Rita was in the hospital giving birth to our first child. I was, it was the, it was, it was uh, the day we got there and I was with Rita and I said, hold on, Alice Ripley's calling, I have to go outside and get this. <laughs> <laughs> so that just shows the passion and commitment I had to, to to working with Alice on this. But yeah, many times we spoke, and and um, luckily it, it it happened. How how did you know that Alice was the one? Because you clearly knew that, or else you wouldn't have tried her so many times. Well, um, I've I think I first I mean I I first was introduced to Alice seeing sideshow in, in the theater and became a a, a, a obsessive fan. But Alice was actually the first person uh, I got to accompany as a young, uh, you know, just out of college, aspiring composer, accompanist. Uh, my friend Melissa Justin, who was working with Kurt Deutsch um, at Chickaboom, said, do you want to accompany Alice on a song for our Chickaboom Christmas concert? And I said, absolutely. And we met and she just, I describe Alice's voice as like a stop everything you're doing voice. It just has this richness and beauty and so many emotions at once. Mm -hmm. And it, that was always going to be Diana. Diana was something that just immediately stopped your heart in terms of the emotion oh. she was singing with. So um, uh, when I first heard that voice, it just was so many things. And, and, and I knew that that's the, what the character wanted to be. Do you mean this voice? Yeah. yeah. Who's that song again? <laughs> you know, there's a reason why, people, okay? Maybe you ought to ask yourself why next time. Um, you know, you watch that thing, and it's like, you would think that we are lip syncing. Because the thing is, in musical theater, when you're doing it the right way, I guess, meaning you have a director and a team that helps you, helps it come out of you, the character has a voice. The character has a specific voice, and and there is a track for that voice of for the character that you want to hit, just like you hit your physical tracks. And you know, with next to normal, I think I'm still figuring out. I want another shot. I want to figure out where her voice is. Mm -hmm. But I think we hit. I hit some. We hit. We all hit these like bing, 
these bing moments a lot, you know, most of them were like bing moments and it's because of this material that we have. Yeah. So yeah, that was right before I threw the silverware or right after I threw, right <laughs> after I threw the silverware in the, it was right, right before you took my eye out in the audience. Hey, I'm um, Lewis. Um, I just sent you some donations to read, and I'll underscore right. you with appropriate music. Great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh my God. Sweet gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Two hundred and six dollars. He says, "I saw the national tour of Next to Normal and was a changed person. Such an affecting and powerful piece of art. The lyric, something next to normal would be okay with me, is more timely than ever." Rosalinda from Florida, $10. Thank you so much for this reunion. This means so much to me. Allie from New Hampshire, $10. Thank you for being a reminder that it's okay to feel things. Uh, Roseanne from New York, $10. Thank you guys for organizing such a wonderful reunion and bringing people together for such a great cause. Ben from New York, $25. My girlfriend, Dana, just became my fiance this past weekend. Congratulations. And next to normal means so much to her. Uh, James from New York, $25. And Megan from Virginia, $25. Thank you to Seth and James for bringing uh, to, together this cast. The show literally saved my life, and I'm thankful for every single one of you. Love and light. Yeah. Wow. And listen to this. Aaron, I hope you see this because I failed other ways to tell you. Next to normal changed my life. You changed my life. So much so that when I came out as, a trans as transgender six years ago, I named myself after you. Oh. Oh, it's made me cry. Oh my god! Wow! Yeah. wow. This showman, so many. You no, know, it's true. Listen, I I've, I've, over the years, ten years, I've been touring the country. People always come up to me about next to normal more than anything. And when I was promoting um, my Christmas song last Christmas, I I uh, met a guy named Mike Gallagher who uh, was running a radio station, and he came up to me when he found out I was in the building, and he explained to me that he went to Broadway all the time with his wife. He went all the time. His favorite thing. Broadway shows, and when his wife passed away of cancer, he was depressed. He was at home. He couldn't move. He didn't want to, but he had tickets to some show named Next to Normal, and he said, Bobby, I came back 40 times to see that show. And that show healed me. You know, so this show does more for to more people than anyone should uh, ever knows. I mean, it, there's so many stories each one of us has individually that we could tell about how it helped someone change their lives, whatever, healed them. It's amazing. Well, I was going to say to that point, it's interesting because, you know, this isn't a show where it's just about one person, about Alice's character, for example, because mental illness, mental illness is in my family. And I know that it affects every single member in the family and everyone who's in that person's life. Therefore, like to your point, Bobby, everyone, every character on here, every actor who played someone in the show that's someone in the audience. That's you know right. what I mean? It's like the the son, the father, the the psychiatrist, the therapist. You know, the, everyone. What are, are is there anyone who has a story that sticks out? Because to you know, as Doctor Lapook was saying, mental illness is definitely at, at record highs for depression and anxiety right now because of COVID. Alice, go. You know what I remember about when you take on the role, or I thought it was just me, but later I remember Jen going. Alice, everybody was, everybody was feeling it. You know, she was saying everybody was feeling that that feeling of that you got hit by a bus. So, but part of what you take on when you decide to play these roles is um, the stage door. And so I used to think I used to practice this that if uh, or I would do this if um, if I if I felt like I could talk to a hundred people, I would go out. But if I couldn't, then I would take the Diana Ross exit, which is what I call it. So, you know, what I'm not going to do is take the stage, go out the stage door and just talk to 10 people and then leave. Everybody who wants to talk gets to have a chance. So that's something that I thought was important because, you know, because of what you go through. So, uh, but this is what I'm getting to. Everybody that, and this, I'm kind of outing the audience now. And, and you know, if it isn't clear how much I love the audience, it's, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it should be very clear. And they all really think that they're the only ones at the moment that they're telling me their story, when they take my take me by the elbows, and th this person just wants to tell me thank you, basically is what they want to say. But they also want to share a little bit of why they feel so grateful, and they tell a little bit of the horror. Mm -hmm. You hear a little or a lot of the horror of what happened, and but it used to break my heart because I'm still an actor now, observing 
you know, I'm not a therapist and I'm not Diana. I'm an actor observing, which is my favorite thing to do. And so I'm watching this person and I'm thinking, wow, this person thinks, and this is true for everybody that talked to me, you know, Soto Voce, don't want anybody to hear this detail. There is so much shame associated with mm -hmm. mental debris and with trauma, mental trauma. And, you know, it's really, really sad because it, you know, we wouldn't make fun of somebody who, who was, well, maybe some, maybe if you were in the White House, you might make fun of somebody who was mentally, who was right. physically disabled. But generally those of us who don't, who care about people, don't make fun of people who are physically disabled and we don't make fun of people who are mentally disabled, right. but we forget because you don't see it. And people are really good at coping because that's how we're still alive. When we have, and everybody suffers from some kind of mental debris, I've decided, you know, everybody has a different scale. Brian Yorkie gave me uh, two books when I was preparing for what I had no idea I was getting into. Um, one is Darkness Visible by William Styron, which is a thin volume, my favorite phrase, because you can roll it up in the back pocket. Wow, that'll, that's a, it's a doozy. And it, it sets the record straight of like, you know, you can be melancholy and that way you get, you get that color in there, but you don't have to be depressed. And he, and then Andrews, well, William Styron tended to be, you know, his book is more poetic, but Noonday Demon is the other book. Remember that book, Tom, that Brian gave me? It's, a, it's this big, it's a tome, paperback, where the, you can see through the pages, there's so much data about this, you know, and it comes down to something that I didn't know, and this, you know, I'll finish with this. It's a chemical equation in your head, depression. And, you know, I'm not trying to make it sound simple, but maybe, maybe we have more of a say over how that equation works out than we might think, because it's in our head. You, you know, you don't put a Band-Aid on it and Neosporin, and you know it's going to be fine in two weeks or whatever. You don't know. And so we don't know the kind of damage you could do. We don't know what kind of miracles can occur. And, you know, Diana's a different kind of crazy than my family. My family's crazy too, but in a different way. So I had to make all that up. And I always want to credit our, our dear friend, Michael Greif, our, our, our uncle, our gungle. We love him. And without him, I would really not, have, I wouldn't have been able to do what I was doing because he was, he was out there going, you know, I'm in Tokyo. He was going, okay, so like, you know, a little bit less, a little bit more. No, perfect. Because I don't know what it's like to hallucinate. I'm the only person I know that doesn't take prescription pills at all. I've never tried to kill myself. I've never lost a child. I don't have kids. I mean, I'm Norma Desmond. I live by myself. I wear sunglasses inside the house. There's a guy in the picture, but he's on the periphery. And nobody knows what's going on with the person I'm in a relationship and with. And I just you. want to be a movie star at all costs, you guys. I mean, I'm get ready because it's going to happen. I'm telling you. It's the easiest role I ever played. That's it. End of sermonette. <laughs> I want to play. Um, this is Alice when she was on Stars in the House the last time, and she gave us uh, her her next and normal song. This is from Stars in the House. Tom, and you wrote the music to this. There was a time when I flew higher. Was a time the wild girl running free would be me. Now I see her feel the fire. Now I know she needs me there to share. I'm nowhere. All these blank and tranquil years seems they've dried up all my tears. And while she runs free and fast, seems my wild days are past. But I miss the mountains. I miss the dizzy heights, all the manic magic days and the dark depressing nights. I miss the mountains, 
I miss the highs and lows. All the climbing, all the falling, all the while the wild wind blows, stinging you with snow and soaking you with rain. I miss the mountains. I miss the pain. Mountains make you crazy. Here it's safe and sound. My mind is somewhere hazy. My feet are on the ground. Everything is balanced here and on an even keel. Everything is perfect. Nothing's real. Nothing's real. And I miss the mountains. I, I miss the lonely climb. Wandering through the wilderness and spending all my time where the air is clear and cuts you like a knife. I miss the mountains. I miss the mountains. I miss my life. I miss my life. Bye, man. And no, I'm kidding. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, oh, okay, so that's the wonderful Tracy Stark playing piano for me because Tom Kit was busy. He's a little busy these days. When you win a Pulitzer, everybody wants to at least to say hi to you. Um, and I'm so happy I finally have that track to sing to. You know, that's as close as it's going to get to live performance. My second generation, you know, and now it's on my, my you know, pad, that my tablet, um, and it is really weird because there is no belting going on. <laughs> yeah. The mic is right here. There's so it's a totally different way of singing, and I'm for it. I, I'm happy to to do a to let it float a little bit. Let's go, you guys. You know we don't have to fill the room right now. So let's make it up. Hey Adam, I sent you some donations. Take a gander. I didn't get them. Oh, you, know, you, may sent, you may have sent it to me. You no, I sent them to you, Bobby. Jay sent to you, but Adam, I did send you. But by the way, next time you guys write your phone numbers, maybe put a hyphen so it's not just a <laughs> string of numbers. <laughs> I did. I did. I know. When you said numbers, I thought you meant Venmo so you could send us money, but then I read it again and I realized you were talking so about Bobby, numbers. Bobby, you read Adam. I'm going to send you an email. <laughs> sure. All right. Well, this is nice, you guys. All right. Erica from New York, $25. And she says, hi, Aaron. Huge, huge fan since Les Mis, which got me into Broadway. I was supposed to see Moulin Rouge the weekend after the shutdown began, but I donated my ticket refund to the Actors Fund. Nice. Hoping that I can see it post-shutdown. What a class act. Amanda Marie from Melbourne, Australia. $50. All right. What time is it there? Huge thank you to you guys for doing this. This has made my day, my month, my year. Camille from Georgia, $25. I'm a huge Moulin Rouge fan. Thank you for all that you do. Casey from Kansas, $10. Thank you for doing this. Next to normal was my way of grieving my mother's death. It will always hold the most special place in my heart. We hear that a lot. Kristen from New York, $25. Thank you all so much for doing this stream. This show is super emotional for me, especially as someone with a bipolar mother. This donation is on behalf of, I won't say this right, Les Amis and a high for them would be greatly appreciated. Is that right, Aaron? I think that's uh, it, yeah. How do you say it, please, Aaron? Uh, you, uh, what you said is right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I thought so. I thought so. Um, Dana from Tel Aviv, $25, a little donation to say thank you. And lastly, Lisette, $25. And she says, hi, guys, Next to Normal is my all-time favorite musical and has gotten me through some really tough times. I just want to say thank you for helping create this beautiful show. I love you guys. I hope you're all staying safe, uh, safe and healthy, and we hope the same for you all. Thank you. And FYI, Bobby, you were 
giving a shout out to Les Amis de Pum. Thank you. I know I had it for dinner the other night. I can't believe I said it wrong. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that brings right tears to my eyes. That's so sweet. Oh. Good. Adam, would you yeah. like to read yours, dear? Yes. Okay. Ready? Bridget, $20, sending love from Sydney, Australia. It's my birthday. Happy birthday. And I'm so glad to spend it watching you, uh, watching with all of you. I want to, oh, it disappeared. And it's back. I want to thank each and every one of you uh, all for what you do on stage and all. Lauren, $5. Hey, everyone from Scotland. Hey, Scotland. Right. Having a great evening um, while doing university work. Nice. Helping you procrastinate. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to keep the arts alive in schools once I graduate as a teacher. Yes, teachers. Muffy. Yes, Muffy. $25. Thank you to this cast for giving me my favorite Broadway show. Um, what you created was so special and life-changing. Uh, Caitlin from Indiana, $25. Thanks so much, Seth and James, for hosting all this. Yes, uh, these streams are amazing. They are. So glad for the love um, for Next to Normal is still alive. Winky face, love you all. Love a winky face. Um, Sarah from Washington, $20. Aaron, this is a sort of Aaron section. This is a sub Aaron section in the, um, Aaron, you are the most beautiful human. So good to see your face live. Um, and then we have Ashley from Georgia, $25. Please tell Aaron I love him and I'd love to share a stage with him someday. Um, that concludes the Aaron section for now. Um, Isabella Flor um, from Florida, $12. My parents are very similar to Dan and Diana. So this show has meant so much to me over the years. I also signed up to be a poll worker, yes, in my community, thanks to Seth and James and the representatives of Poll Hero. Amazing. Wow. Wow. That is amazing. Hey. It's, it's still, t you know, when we started this show, we, um, it was, I remember, do you remember, Seth, that it was just sort of, uh, like wow, someone's watching in London, and and it's easy now that we. This is like show number I don't know two hundred two or two hundred three. It's wow. still amazing. It's still amazing that people donate, and it's still and it's still amazing that people are watching it from all over the world. It's a power to theater, and and for tonight particularly next to normal. I mean it. I mean it. It's incredible. It's incredible. I just wanted to say that. It's like, I say bravo. It's amazing. And FYI, we got a lot of questions from Michael Berry. Oh, right. But I will focus on just one. Adam, he says, Adam, you must do your quote unquote old man. Morty. Oh, no. <laughs> Morty. Morty. Hold on, I gotta get really close. He's, he talks into the camera like. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> you have a question for me? What did he used to do? Oh man. <laughs> That was one of the so never to change, that I was perfect, oh. never to change. <laughs> Jennifer, no, but you Jennifer. pull your pants up like under your armpits. That's what you You're do perfect. too. When... Never change. <laughs> <laughs> That's more. Yeah, he, was, he was a troll. He was a, a theater so troll weird. who lived ex exclusively backstage at the booth theater. And he yes. stays there. And next time I'm in that theater, I will reconnect with Morty. The more the more serious the show is, I just feel like the stupider things get backstage. Like if you yeah. each knew how stupid <laughs> Can I, I just say Bobby, it? Bobby. Bobby like spearheaded a lot of the a lot Bobby, of Bobby like I'd come off after I tried to kill myself and I that was the one time when I would sit in a chair. Just sit, right? And I had like two minutes while Bobby sang his song. And you know, clean up the blood. Sorry, guys. Spoiler: If you don't know it by now, it's been a decade. All right, geez, the guilt. But then, when he would come up stage, or before you would go on, or at intermission, one of those times. Mm -hmm. I know I'm one of just pick, take your pick. Bobby would be like in my face, going, <laughs> and I go, Bobby, don't try to cheer me up. And it was like there was no punchline. I didn't laugh at the end. It was there was no J.K. I was like, don't try to cheer me up, Bobby. <clears throat> No because we're like, Bobby and I did sideshow together, so I can talk to him any way I want. We've been through the ringer and back. Um, but I just want to say the Superboy, Aaron gets all the special attention. I have no problem with that. I'm proud of my golden children, and Aaron is my favorite golden child. You know, but there is an invisible girl as well. She's right here. 
How do I? <laughs> With petting your hair. I just feel like I have to mention the ladies as well. I know Lewis doesn't need it, but we love, the, and then I love my golden voice. So there you go. Lewis, hey Lewis, what you, tell tell a story backstage or something that made you laugh, Lewis? Yeah. Come on, back. Oh my gosh, um, you saw it all. Oh yeah, I was I was like an observer. I mean, I I did. It was like the best gig in the world because I just got to sit and listen and watch and absorb these great performances, specifically Alice, because I spent so much time across from her. But mm -hmm. uh, gosh, I can't. There was like so many things that happened. Um, like we used to have like a uh, teenage girl and uh, our characters that like um, Louise, I created like a character of, of Louise. And it was just like, I was trying to like um, uh, 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 identify with the kids in the show because, you know, Alice and Bobby were off in their own world and, you know, they were doing their own thing. So we, we had Louise Nobler was my, uh, my character. She was always talking about um, <laughs> there was going to be different, and 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 um, that that you know she was going to date like she she really wanted to date uh, the theater the 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 head of the like the theater kids, but like only if they were like doing regional theater because uh -huh. like I don't know it was it, we had some laughs we had some fun. It's all it's silly inside jokes. Yeah. We were yeah. doing that. go ahead. Dear. I have just one. It's so stupid, but it's Bobby and it's so funny. And every, you're going to think about this every time you hear I Miss the Mountains now, but every time backstage during I Miss the Mountains, the lyric, um, uh, my wild days are past. Bobby on the word butt would just always point to his butt. <laughs> it was the dumbest thing ever, but you'll never forget it. It was so funny. Just so stupid. Hey, guys. But, but. <laughs> and then the I tempo kicks in. <laughs> I have an idea. <laughs> what talking about um, that was one stupid thing we did. But we were in tech. We were doing sing a song of forgetting. Stop like you. And off stage left, there was these two huge cans. And when they came on, it looked like truck headlights. Yes, I told this yeah. story the other day. So every time Michael Gray would go stop. We'd stop and they'd hit those lights every time. I'd be like, "Everybody get out! Get out! It's a truck! Everybody get out of the way!" And then I'd be like, "Oh, it's not. It's not. It's okay. It's just lights." And then we'd go and then and then again, Greg would go stop. <laughs> And then the lights go on. We're like, oh my God! I mean, we were so fun. young. Oh God. Oh we were and so immature. Good. Hey, Jen Damiano, I sent you another batch of donations, and then we're going to go to Aaron for something. So, Jen, why don't you read it with your two ends? Okay. Yes, Jen with two ends. I don't know where, why I spell it that way. I love it. Um, yeah, Stephanie from California, $10. Thank you, Next to Normal, for years of inspiration. The show changed my life forever. I even changed my major. Brooke from Florida, $100. Super grateful for these shows you guys do. We are nothing without the arts. Love this show and Missing Broadway so much. It brings me so much joy at a time like this. Also, Aaron, thank you for sharing your beautiful gifts with the world. Allison from New York, $25. Thank you for doing this, Seth and James. I love Next to Normal and was lucky enough to see it on Broadway. I have an anxiety disorder and I really appreciate shows like it and Dear Evan Hansen that help fight the stigma. I really needed tonight's episode. Thank you. Oh. Julie oh. from Seattle, $257. I never saw Next to Normal on Broadway, but I saw it on tour at the Fifth Avenue Theater in Seattle with Alice Ripley. I got to see the Kennedy Center production on a trip to DC at the start of this year. Really wish I could have seen that. Kristen from Cincinnati, $15. Cass, thank you for helping me cope with my sister's illness. Chris from South Jersey, $30. I saw Next to Normal three times on Broadway and once on tour. I was blown away by this original cast and their storytelling. And lastly, James from Florida, $25. There was never a more perfect cast. Can you all really know the impact this show has had on so many? Thank you for your honest and moving performances. Wow. By the way, Jen, I want to hire you for some voiceover work. I never heard of smooth, delicious. I do. <laughs> so, Amazing. So nice of you to say that. <laughs> all right, so Aaron, I know you probably have neighbors in room 244 next to you in your hotel, but um, I... I sent you a piano track, so I want to end this show with you singing something. Sure. Uh, this is from the show. Um, it's uh, it's a song that really kind of um, 
struck such a note with me and haunted me from the first time I sang it. And it was one of the quiet moments in the show, which I was always very uh, uh, obsessed with. And um, again, spoiler, not to bring it too far down, but uh, it was basically when I when I when I got the song, I was like, okay, so this is me singing a lullaby to my mother, trying to convince her to essentially kill herself to join me and how that kind of works around. And I just think it's a, it's always a, been a very haunting, beautiful piece of uh, material. So this is, there's a world. There's a world. There's a world I know place we can go where the pain will go away there's a world where the sun shines each day there's a world there's a world out there I'll show you just where, and in time I know you'll see. There's a world where we can be free. Come with me. Come with me There's a world where we can be free Come with me It's wonderful. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> Aaron. Aaron, that was perfect. Mm -hmm. And look what you did. Look what you made me cry. I told myself before I came to the show, when Aaron sings that song, I won't be crying like I was during the show. Mm -hmm. And look what you did. Thank you. Good job. Excellent. Now, can I just say one thing really quick? That was beautiful. Um, there's so many people that, that uh, Adam and I did most of the run, uh, the entire run, but pretty much from start to finish. And there were so many people that came in and out of the show. I just want to take one minute, and I was thinking of of Marin while while Aaron was singing that song. Uh, Aaron and uh, 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 Jason and and Marin did the show for a while, and it was wonderful to work with them. And um, just wanted to say that I uh, loved working with Marin, and and we all miss her very much. Yeah, yeah, we just had her anniversary. Yeah, a, a week ago or a couple of days ago. So we it's all miss fun. her, yeah. her voice. I miss her too. voice so much. Yeah. I can yeah. remember being in the dressing room when I was leaving, and Brian Darcy was in there, and then Jason came in, and the three of us were in there, and um, they're special mm -hmm. guys, and Jason's special, and so is Marin, and I got to see the very last performance before the show closed with the two of them. So it was very special, and I was very, you know, I was so happy for Jason to act opposite his wife. I was also very envious that I didn't get a chance to act opposite Marin. So, mm -hmm. no, that would have been a joy for me, too. Also, shout to Kyle Dean Massey as well. Yeah, Kyle Dean Massey. Yeah. Well. Yes, Kyle. Yeah. And Megan, Megan Fahey. Yeah. yeah. Did the show. It's very special for all. Good call, you guys. <laughs> hey, but uh, we can't go yet. Please, I need one minute. I, I want to say thank you to Lewis Hobson in person for everybody. For the la uh, two years ago, I was really, 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 really in a funk. And it was just a rough time altogether. And I need to talk to a father and a friend and a husband. And Lewis, you know, I've, I've had to call you a couple times. If there's one time I really needed you, and you were there for me. And I know this entire group will always be there for me. But Lewis, thank you. I love you. And a lot of people don't know how much goodness you do for so many people. But I know what you've done for me personally. And listening to me, uh, the times that I've, I've needed to talk meant the world to me. Thank you, Lewis. Uh, anytime. You guys are family. Maureen says hello, by the way. She just hey. <laughs> And you know what, Seth and James, that's what we can do. 
um, the doctor asked. I think talking is, is maybe it is the most important thing and, mm -hmm. and therefore listening. And, and maybe it is the hardest thing. You know, if it were easy, we wouldn't have an, you know, we wouldn't have this problem. So then it is a problem if, if it's if it's causing people pain and, and making them ill and all kinds of awful things that come out of some kind of trauma, especially, I think. Um, but I think that if we talk about it, we understand that we're not the only ones. Mm -hmm. People understand they're, that they're not the, or or, you know, it's not about comparing stories, really. It's about if you get a perspective about somebody else you feel a little stronger to go on because you're not alone and you know you're it's you there's nothing wrong with you your shame is just part of being human and you know all of that stuff but you need to talk about it and there has to be language it has to actually be language that's said and i think next to normal thank you tom and brian yeah. you know brian wrote the lyrics but but without the music the, the lyrics have no place to go so the the, the story of next to normal gives you an idea of like, you know, I just want to fit this in before we leave Diana. I hear from people that, that they, they think Diana's real. And, and the sad fact is that Diana's a hero. If everybody was like Diana, we wouldn't have as much of a concern here. Diana yeah. survives. Right. All of that. I think that's, that's probably very unusual for somebody to survive all of that and to be able to have a clarity. And to have the people around her go, okay, you know, all of that's a perfect storm to happen in the, in her favor. But I think that talking about it and actually having language to communicate how you feel, to understand that there are tens of thousands of different ways of describing how you f might feel at any given moment. And that as actors, of course, that's our important, that's really important for us, but everybody, nobody can be lazy about this. But I think especially right now, I mean, we are really being pushed to the edge. But tonight, I was just, just so happy to see everybody. I miss you all and I love you. And Aaron, Aaron's, Aaron's the, you know, he's, you're always being, somebody else needs you. So I'm so glad that you're here tonight because it's so good to have you here. I mean, of course you would be, but we always miss you. We always love you. And I'm glad that I don't have your phone number because I would call you and go, hi, it's your mom. How are you doing? <laughs> what do you need? Um, but I feel that way about all of you guys. And Bobby, I, I'm, I'm glad that you guys are okay. I was worried about you. Well, thanks. Um, yeah, thanks. Lewis, Lewis just keeps, you know, employing me. He keeps giving me things to work on. And Adam, I think that I've seen you and Aaron the least, and I miss you guys. I think about you every day, every single day. And I just send you little hearts and little angels. You know, I'm sure you're going to be great. But... I don't want to miss these years. So thanks for bringing us together, you guys, even if it's just this way. Mm. You know, we well, had our moment. I, I have to say, Adam Chandler Barrett, you know, I also want to say um, these are important. I want to say that spending time with you, we got to, we went out to the movies together. Remember in DC, we went and saw Milk together. Remember that? Yep. Experiences like that. And I listened to you and Lewis a lot. I would kick back. You two guys are so, it would blow my mind listening to your conversations. That I was so like, I'm out of my league. These guys are so intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> but I want your parents to know that I, you are so passionate. You get it from your parents. Your parents are great people. You have a great family. And that's the one thing I took from you was listening. You're a very intelligent man, and I learned a lot from listening to you. Aaron, you know, you uh, always brought so much to the show and to me. And we, I love spending time with you and creating this. You always were so you came up to me so many times throughout that run and said, Bobby, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're doing this, man. I'm so glad you're here. And when you left that night, man, mm -hmm. that just broke my heart when you left. And I know, you know, it's, you know, there's just no, there's no words. I'm so proud of all of you, but Aaron, I'm proud of you and how you've always stayed humble. And when you went on for Greece live, you had 15 minutes before you went on. I emailed you and said, I can't believe we're about to sit with my kids and watch this. You're going to be John Travolta. You're my kids is John Travolta. And I had John Travolta, but not my kids. You're John. And you wrote back that email in two minutes. You responded. I'm like, you're going on live. What are you doing? What kind of guy you are, man. And Jen, I'm so happy to see you. You were always such a light to me and so much fun to hang out. And, and every time we hang, it's just all we do is laugh. I know. We, oh, it's such a great thing, you know, and the tang and Buenos Aires and all that stuff. And the time that you and Aaron backstage during tech said, hey, Bobby, what did you guys do before cell phones? <laughs> what? Oh, my gosh. Am I that old? Kids. <laughs> we wondered what the hell was happening. That's what we did. Anyway, I'm sorry, <laughs> Seth and James and everybody, but I just had to say special love to all y'all. And Tom, 
well, you know everything. I, I do. I care for you. You created. You 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 exploded the horizon of musical theater. You and Brian just you just catapulted all of us. Exploded the horizon. Wait a minute. You exploded, exploded the horizon. The horizon. <laughs> <laughs> That's Inside funny. jokes, you guys, but laugh along. It's funny. You would think it was funny too. So go ahead and laugh. Hey, Jordan is watching. Hi, Jordan Leeds. Another. Hey, Jordan. Oh my God, Jordan Leeds. Oh, love you, honey. Hi, love you so much. All right, guys, we're wrapping up. I want to thank, there's one more donation that we forgot to say, Mariana. So thank you, Mariana. I think her last name is Faraz. Well, there are a lot of people that are oh, just donating. People, so we're, we we have to end. Yeah, we, we're we sorry that we can't continue. It's been amazing. The comments have been wonderful. You guys. Thank you all so much. And uh, we'll see everyone tomorrow for our six-month anniversary with Crazy